What's up, cannabis community out there on YouTube? Um, good idea. Um, I've been, you know what, I haven't done it, but uh, it's brought to my attention that <clears throat> how to do a DWC grow correctly. Um, in order to succeed at this, you need to keep things simple, and at the same time, you need to be vigilant about your reservoir changes. But we'll get into all those beautiful details later. First, I want to go into just generally what you're going to need, and um, that'll about cover this. And uh, we'll cover a little bit of veg, and you know, I'll probably ramble on about other things as well in between. But um, to start, you it it all depends on uh, your setup and your resources, how big you can go with DWC, because. You guys know, like a week ago, I showed you guys this plant, and I it hadn't gotten any nutrients other than CalMag for the first week or so, two of its uh, little life. And you can see that after adding nutrients, and uh, here we are like a week or so later, and this thing is just like, boom, Godzilla. That's how DWC grows. So if you're looking to fill, you know, large, vast canopy spaces, with uh, you know single plants, DWC um, is definitely you know a good choice of hydroponically growing because it's relatively simple. Let me get a chair so I can sit down and talk. It's going to be a while, I can tell. Because it's relatively simple, inexpensive, and it's not a very complex system that you need to set up, but also at the same time just as efficient and sometimes even more efficient than other forms of hydro and if tea ebb and flow you know uh drip you know i really don't consider um rock wool or any other kind of medium that goes into a container hydroponic rock wool is just another form of um soilless medium in my opinion same thing as cocoa same thing as sunshine Anything that's a medium that doesn't contain nutrients to me is a soilless medium and hydroponic or the rock wool is definitely on that list for me um, because you know it's really not hydro you know what I mean so um, it's soilless hydro but it's not hydroponics not like this so this, the, the, the reason why these DWC plants are so effective is because there's so much oxygen just get pounced on the root system at all times just totally encapsulating nutrients you know uh, around the roots and uh, readily available to absorb at the plants you know will you know so um, you can see how big and lush this thing is I mean it's, and it's just perfect this is perfect the perfect plant this right here is a uh, super silver sour diesel haze Holy shit, this thing fucking blew the fuck up. I didn't even know this was uh, the haze. But anyway, um, that's how fast these things grow. Like literally, you can come into your room and they will grow fucking inches a day. And if you typically come in your room every, you know, three to four days like I do, the, these things are just mind astonishing how fast the rapid growth is in DWC. Now, I'm not telling everybody to go out there and convert to DWC um, because I like doing both cocoa and DWC. Um, his like to alt alternate things, keeping things new, you know, trying new things and different approaches. You know, that's what keeps me on my A game. You know, just trying different things. I'm not always stuck on the same thing. But the one thing that I don't fucking switch up um, is nutrients. But as far as uh, technique, you know, as growing and trimming and anything like that, technique and training, I always try some new shit. That's the, uh, this is the blue dream. I thought I had over there a second ago. Look at this damn thing. Whew. So anyway, you can see like this thing is just enormous already. And it's only been like a week and a half maybe into nutrient feeding. And uh, very, very effective you know form of hydroponics because basically all you need is a bucket and an air stone um, what's going to set this video different apart from other DWC DIYs or how to grows is I'm going to actually show you guys what I do you know there's many many approaches 
and I always say it, there's no one, just one correct way to do things. There are so many w ways to approach things, but you have to find uh, a way to approach, um, you know, a growing style that suits you, your needs, and your resources all at the same time. Uh, I, I'm going to say that if you're not home frequently, you know, you frequently leave town all the time, you're, you know, this is probably not for you. Um, the reason I'm going to do this for a while is because I'm going to have to go back to work and uh, container feeding is not working when I'm not home. I, you know, I had uh, two weeks of nutrient burn from having my buddy coming over here and uh, doing his best to tend to the, uh, to the ladies, but, you know, he, do he doesn't have that trained eye. He just, you know, there's a piece of paper sitting in front of him and he does just what it says. Now, I'm not really here to evaluate that. He doesn't call me and ask me questions. So basically, um, you know, if shit happens, it happens. And it's like, oh, well, you know what I mean? You, you just fucking move on. So that being said, DWC on hydroponics is relatively simple. As long as you're not overfeeding this system, you're going to have big ass vibrant growth fast as shit just like this um so yeah that, that's that's it it's just very effective you need a bucket so a couple of air stones some media pots um hydrogen um i'm sure you can use perlite too you don't have to use hydrogen you can use rocks out of your backyard you know i mean there's all kinds of ways to approach this you don't have to do it the way i, I got this thing set up here this is just easy for me. You could use lava rock, you know, as this hydrogen uh, replacement medium. Um, so there's all kinds of ways that you can um, set up this kind of a grow, but this is just how I have things set up for myself. So um, basically, this is what I do. I have four, and you know, they kind of, that one in the back is really small, and you get a medium. Then you got the big gigantic motherfuckers right here, and that's it. So um, that covers, uh, you know, what what DWC hydroponic growing is uh, and what it can do for you. Um, the thing, the trick is with this is to keep things consistent within the root zone, and that's always to have aeration uh, and change your reservoir your newts at least every five to seven days. Um, believe it or not, this last grow that I did DWC, I changed my newts every two to three days. But that was also in only a five or five gallon bucket. By the time you subtract the height of the net pot, I'm only left with about two and a half gallons of water at the bottom before it hits the, the bottom of the net pot. So it's really not a five, a half, five gallon bucket, it's really two and a half at that point. So uh, that was the reason for that. So choose a container um, that is gonna suit you best. If your plants are so big, um, like if yeah, like these are gonna be monsters, dude. These plants right here are gonna be one pound plants. Um, but, and these are not gonna get flowered in these containers because this plant will fucking suck up in between one and three gallons of water a day. Uh, and I don't, uh, I'm, I don't wanna be changing and adding fresh nutrients every day in these small containers. Like I said, there's only two and a half gallons of water in here. So I will be using, I'm going to be flowering in these big ass rope totes. I'm going to show you the sticker right here. Rope tub, okay, from, uh, God, I want to say Walmart. I think they're $5 a piece. And I don't know where it is at the moment. <clears throat> but basically I've cut a circle and a board, laid half inch plywood, and then laid it on top and wrapped it in uh, uh, poly, uh, you know, propylene panda film, and to ensure that you know the board doesn't get wet, and then cut another 10-inch net pot hole in the center to support the plant in the center. So they will get. And I've already measured from the bottom uh, of the container to the bottom of the net pot, and is it in? It's exactly 10 gallons of water. So um, yeah, that's it. So these uh, plants will be getting flowered in a 10 gallon reservoir VWC bucket, homemade. It's, it's the best way to do it. Homemade is the best. There's, I walk into hydro shops out there and I don't see 
any badass DWC equipment. I see all kinds of bullshit, ebb and flow, NFT, all this crazy shit that costs you a lot of money. Of course, they have air stones and shit like that on the shelves, but they're not going to direct you to a system that is effectively more efficient and half the expense of anything else to have sitting in the store, you know what I mean? So you're going to have to just know that. Um, DWC fucking rocks. I've done the only thing equivalent to a DWC I could possibly say myself would be an NFT. Uh, drips, uh, you know, uh, yeah, NFT system with uh, rock and air stones in the res and rock and air stones at the top of the uh, at the feed line. So that's the only other system that I know that comes close to fucking hitting the charts with DWC results. So. Yeah, like I said, you're going to need some buckets. I use these buckets right here, um, five-gallon Lowe's buckets. They're light-proof. Um, they're durable. I've had these for years. You're going to need some net, net pots. These are 10-inch net pots. They fit precisely on top of the bucket without having to fabricate or alternate anything. You're going to need some kind of, you know, medium I use expanded uh, clay pellets you could use lava rock or anything else that you have um, that's uh, washed and clean perlite you could even use uh, fucking you know like river rock for fish tanks I mean there's you know whatever you got laying around um, it's just easy for me to wash these things and a uh, system that I have set up when once uh, this whole row is done because once I pull this plant out all these little pebbles other than the top inch they're like all just stuck together and you have to break them up by hand there's so much root inside the, this lava rock so you're gonna need you're gonna need your plants obviously um, to make your own system I have a video already that's a, called DIY DWC and hydro farm buckets um, check my playlist on how to make these you're gonna need air stones I like these soda pop can air stones right here. They got a lot of surface area, they're pretty big. Like I said, they're about the size of a soda pop can. And uh, add one in the bucket just for veg, you know what I mean? And uh, you're gonna need a hydro farm kit. This is a, uh, you don't, I guess you don't have to do this, but I like it because I can, you know, come in here and, and pinch this, see what a, the water level is at. It's a, I know that the water level's right there. I know that the plants drank in about a half a gallon for the day in veg. So at that point, you know, you can either let it go or fill it up for that day. You know, it's just an indication too. That's all that is. Um, if you buy the Hydro Farm uh, drip ring kit, you're also going to get this right here, the drip ring. And this is what I use to start very, very small plants. They have very, very little roots. I use the drip ring first for about the first, you know, just until the roots start to uh, become visibly um, at the bottom of the net pot. And once they uh, they come uh, they come out, start to uh, protrude from the net pot, I pull the plug. You can see that the drip ring is not even in use. And then I throw an air line in the side. I drill a hole here in the bucket. And uh, I run my air stone straight to the bottom. Just like this here, no difference. And uh, each one of these buckets has got an air stone in it. And that's it. And all four of these plants, this is one, two, three, four, are controlled off of this uh, active aqua, you know, variable output. Uh, 15 liters of air a minute. Um, these are actually very durable, I've had them for a few years now, I want to say three years, and they're very, very quiet and efficient. I haven't had any problems with them. They do not put out excessive heat. I don't recommend recommend buying the die cast uh, air pumps as they just have a single piston drive and it kind of works like an engine. They put out lots of air, but they also at the same time, they put out tons of heat and that's not good for the root zone. So try and select a pump that puts out you know, a good amount of air like this one, I'm able to run four buckets on it. One, two, three, four. Now, the good thing about this is 
I'm, this one is for veg, but I also have a, you know other you know the exact same pump for um, you know I got all loads of shit back there, but um, I got, I'm going to use one of these per per uh, plant. So I will take this and run four air stones to this one 10 gallon reservoir and flower that's which will be housing just one plant. So four air stones will be located around the perimeter of the roots, just totally encapsulating the roots with fucking massive amounts of air to encourage fucking tremendous amount of growth and uh, yields. So that's how that'll be done. So one pump uh, and four air stones per one plant and flower, and then you have uh, a recipe for one and a half pound uh, one and a half pound plant. So. Uh, these plants, I, I wanted to say this is, we're at like maybe three weeks, maybe three weeks of, uh, from very, very tiny, dude, like three weeks, you know, to this is it. This is how fast TWC grows. Maybe, yeah, somewhere around there. But once the roots start to poke out the bottom of the net pot, dude, the, the growth it just starts to just take off like fucking skyrocket, dude. So... Um, that covers what you need, what you will need, and how it will work. Now you don't need to use the buckets that I have, you don't need to use that. If you prefer like an 18 gallon, you know, black Sterilite 18 gallon tote from Walmart, you can cut a hole in the center, put your net pot there, you know, and make that work as too. Or you can get an even bigger one, like a 32 gallon tote and cut a hole in the center. It all depends on you and how you want to go with this. There's no one uh, correct way. It, it all, it's, it's all up to you on how you want to uh, create this, uh, exp you know, this uh, little adventure. <laughs> so um, I can tell you this, bigger the better. And uh, the more air, you know, the bigger your, your container is. I can get it one and a half pounds a one and a half pound plant per just this bucket now but then again I can't leave or I have to have somebody over here on a daily basis to top this off with uh, fresh water until it's time to do a new change so um, other than that you know I have to be here you know constantly to maintain a reservoir container this size it, you know you have to be here around all the time but if you're gonna be gone you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a bigger container to where your plant can uh, doesn't dry up if you're gone for a few days and die. So um, that covers everything about what you're gonna need um, and, and veg and kind of how that works. Um, the buckets I want to say are about two dollars and seventy-five cents. The hydro farm kits you don't need these, but I like to be able to look at the damn side of the container and see how much water it left it's just you know personal preference how much water is left in the thing so all I gotta do is grab you know a container and just pour it through the top of here and fill it back up to the desired level and uh, you know you continue about your business without having to uh, juggle or shift anything around it makes it easy but I want to say these things run about I pay eight dollars for them eight to ten bucks but like it comes with the drip ring kit, and uh, that's that's about that. So um, these are clones. These were clones. They're not clones anymore. But yes, they, you know, technically speaking, are clones of the parent plant. Um, what? How I do this is, is this is how I do this. This is a Northern Lights clone. Okay. How this is gonna work is this just got transplanted the other day so or just yesterday actually um, I'm gonna let this plant veg in this container for about a week maybe two weeks at the most and that's just because I have all this stuff sitting here that I'm waiting on getting bigger and it's gonna replace you know everything in there it's a bunch of buckets laying around there right now but um so i'll start my clones or my seeds in a solo 
cocoa cup. Once they are big enough and they're root bound to this cup, I will pull this thing out and uh, and uh, transfer it into one of these net pot um, containers and uh, you know poke an air stone up to it and let it do its thing. You can um, locate the bottom of the cocoa towards the bottom of the net pot container so you don't have to use the drip ring if you don't want to. So what I mean by root bound, let me see if I can pull out a plant here. Damn, some motherfuckers in there. That's what I mean by root bound. When your roots will get like this in a week or two, about two weeks in a solo cup, then you can go ahead and transplant this into your net pot basket and you don't even have to use a drip ring. Um, it'll just take its course. But if you're gonna start from a freshly rooted clone like this that barely has any roots, you're gonna wanna top drip feed it for a first week until it starts to show roots at the bottom of the net pot. And then uh, at that point, once it gets big enough and you know fills up this uh, pot with roots, then you can go ahead and transplant it and uh, you know go DWC from that point on. But I don't ever, you know, th this is as big as it gets with the solo cup, cocoa, and then this will go DWC. That's it. I don't ever go one gallon and then DWC. Uh, you could, but I, I I don't see why you'd want to. So, because the growth is just so much more explosive. So, the reason why I have this here is to get a f good start in rooting, and also to uh, it's a slower growing system, and I don't want to put this into this system just yet because these plants are so big that there's no room for this thing to start growing in yet. So, I'm gonna wait till there's space in the flower um, room to put this and this and that later. And um, next week, that thing right there will be like this fucker right here. So, uh, yeah, it's just like a revolving circle. Um, it's kind of hard to sum up the art of growing in a 30-minute video, video, you know. So I'm going to give all the, the most information I can in this video, and then we'll move on with, you know, a different episode, you know, as this grow here progresses I'll show you how exactly what what happens um, so pretty stone right now so like I said small medium you know large larger you know what I mean and it just kind of it's like you know progressively gets bigger and then once they get big enough like this plant right here will quad if this was in cocoa, it would triple in size. But since it's going to be D DWC, this thing will quadruple, you know, if not five, six times fold its current size once it hits flower. So that, that concludes everything about what you're going to need, the supplies, and how to go about uh, making and uh, containers and doing things like that to get you started. And uh, concludes how I start my clones and how I approach from start to finish with a veg. Nutrients. You know, a lot of people are going to want to know about nutrients. Guys, nutrients are not the, the key to success. I promise you this. The sooner people realize this, the sooner you'll be obtaining a, a one and a half pounds per plant. So like I said, first two week or two of this little, once this plant right here is you know good good size once it goes into DWC I'd say for about the first week this is all it's going to receive about 250 ppms of CalMag that's it I use RO water so I started zero ppms and then after that this is all I use And along with my 250 ppm's, once I decide to give nutrients, the total nutrient concentration for veg 
is always in between four and five hundred. Um, uh, I can't, you know, because that's DWC pushes the plants so fast in growth, and the nutrients are just so readily available. You don't need any more than that. If you're adding more than that, uh, you know, you're probably just doing more harm than any good. Um, I, I've never had a plant or a strain that requires more than five to six, five to six hundred ppm's in veg, in DWC, and that's considering the fucking plant is like already four feet by four feet. That would be six hundred ppm's for me. Like, but for for this size right here, like I'll show you guys my ppm meter. Five hundred seventeen. It happens to be about you know three quarter gallon low. It hasn't been topped off, so um, I started it this uh, this uh, um, solution at five hundred ppm. So that's pretty fucking accurate. What that tells me is the plant is drinking an equal ratio of nutrient to water. Now, if I took that ppm e uh, reading and being that the the level of water is low and let's just say I started off at 500 and the plant drank about two gallons of water and now the concentration is at like 800 that tells me that the plant is drinking more water than nutrients and the nutrient concentration is too high so you're gonna need to scale that down to the correct ratio that's how that works in DWC um, like I said it always in between four and five hundred and DWC and veg is the sweet spot um, and I, I promise you if you do if you maintain those levels um, you you will not fuck shit up I mean look at these plants between four and five hundred lime green no burn no mag deficient no calcium you know no nitrogen burn uh, no magnesium deficiency no calcium deficiency these fucking plants are 100 percent perfect Look at this thing, it's just this key for success right here. You know, just proof of success. Look at this. So, you know, this is right here. What is this again? Oh, this is Blue Dream. This thing is a fucking animal, dude. So, uh, so, so is this one here. Um, so anyway, yes, um, this is what I use. And I use, the ratios I use in veg is the one, one, one ratio which is a lot here um, on this container like you'll see this vegetative growth one 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 uh, you'll see the seedlings uh, you know suggested feeding is quarter 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 which is still ratio one 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 you'll see down here in tra transition to bloom which is two 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 that's just, just a higher concentration of the ratio of one 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 you can see that you know it's mostly an equal concentrate, uh, equal amounts of each bottle um, for veg. And if I feel like I need to up the ante at all for uh, nitrogen, I might give it a little bit more of this. But that's a rare, rare occasion because DWC is so efficient. It's just like you know, free will. These fucking plants, once they're in DWC, they take off like fucking missiles, dude. So um, I'll do whatever. 250 ppm's is this, this, and this. You can just start off with, you know, a, a couple milliliters, you know, per five gallon container here until you get your proper ratio mix. So, 250 ppm's of CalMag plus 250 ppm's of these three bottles combined equals 500 ppm's total in veg. And that's it. And regardless, I change the nutrients uh, every five to seven days. And uh, that's how I roll. Keeps everything fucking uh, stabilized. And at the same time, everything is pH'd in between 5.8 and 6.0. And uh, as far as checking and adjusting pH every day, I do not suggest you do that because the plant has a root zone. It's a living root zone. And you got to kind of treat this water as a living you know, organism in itself as the plant you know, relies on to thrive you know, off of this water nutrient solution here the plant will fluctuate 
this nutrient solutions, I promise you they fluctuate that on a daily basis. So checking the pH and shit like that on a daily basis is is not necessary as long as long as you pH it to about 5.8 and uh, or 6.0, you're good. Leave it at that. You know, keep topping it off with uh, CalMag water for the next five or seven days, and uh, you're good. Um, the one thing I don't do is can top off with nutrients once the plant has absorbed that amount of wa water. I just put CalMag water to top off the nutrient solution. That's it. So, um, that being said, uh, you know, if I top this off with CalMag water, the, the nutrient concentration will go from 515, whatever it was, when I took that reading, it probably go down to about 450, which you know tells me that you know it's perfect uh, nutrient concentration for the the stage and uh, the, uh, growth for this specific plant. Um, it's it might sound complex, but it's not. It's just you know to me it's like common sense thinking. You know, it's but to the people that have never done this, it. It probably doesn't make any sense, but after your first grow of DWC, believe me, it will all make sense. Um, it's really hard to fuck this up, but it's also really easy to to make one mistake that can totally um, devastate your harvest. Like like I said, if you're not on point with this system and you let your plants go dry, or you don't train change your reservoir every week you are going to have problems with this system and on top of that you're going to want room temperatures you know what room temperatures last summer i had room temperatures of 85 90 degrees in dwc and i still hit 500 grams of plant so but optimal room temperatures for dwc i would say is about 75 degrees because you're not running chillers on these buckets um, so if you're not running chillers like in a recirculating DW, our DWC recirculating setup then you know you're gonna want temperatures that are you know happy medium like 75 degrees would be perfect even 70 degrees would be perfect in your room but it doesn't have to be that it really doesn't like I last summer I had temperatures I wasn't running dedicated AC they were fucking in between 85 and 90 at all times when the lights were on and uh, I didn't have any problems and I still hit 500 grams. Um, if I had added an AC, I probably would have hit, you know, six, over 600 grams. You know, that's the kind, you know, little tweaking can make this DWC grow a lot better for you. So, um, it, it's all up to you on how much equipment you, you want to buy, how much money you want to spend, how much, it's all resources. What are the resources available to you to make this even better than what I have here in front of me? If you want to go out and buy name brand buckets and name brand this and name brand that, it's going to cost you a shitload of money. But you're probably going to get slight, you know, um, you know, better uh, results, but not too much better. When you're hitting 500 grams of plant on a 600 watt bulb, you're pretty fucking good. Um, a lot of people strive to even hit a half a gram per watt. So you're up there in a, you know, 0.85, you know, one gram per watt uh, ratio. You're, you're doing very, very, very well. So um, that's it, you know. Um, like I said, it takes a lot to really teach somebody how to do this, you know, perfectly. It takes more than one 30-minute video. So I'm just going to keep recording and tell you everything that I think you guys need to know for this one single video. And then uh, we'll take it from there. And I'm I'll, sure I'll get feedback and questions. And I'll know where to take the next video, what direction and what information that I specifically need to be focusing on for the next part two video of the DWC How To series. So um, above all, um, what makes... Your little trick when changing your reservoir, like this plant right here is sitting in a bucket that has no nutrients in it. That was just sitting here and just a plain bucket because I'm getting ready to change these reses. What makes these 
easy to transfer um, and do a rest change is take a container, mix all your you know desired nutrients and your and the amount of water that you're going to need for all your buckets. Do them all at the same time. Don't do one every every day. Um, get a, get a, a plan. You know get get on like a, a routine and make this easy for yourself. So you can pick out certain days of the week that you know you can come in here and do every all the work in one day and not have to walk back in here for a few more days. So what makes this good is this is the bucket that the plant grows in, and then this is just a standard you know feed bucket, random water bucket that I just have sitting here. So is this one, this one actually has a handle on it. That one doesn't. Um, so what I do is I'll take this off. You know, water changes. I'll do water changes. Very, very easy. I will take this, this bucket, dump it into the bucket right here that I have the handle in. Go put it outside in your garden. Do whatever you're going to do with it. Um, you feed it to your rose bushes or your tomato plants. Um, and then go ahead and take the nutrients that I've already mixed up in this container and fill it back up to the desired, desired level. And that literally takes like about... 60 seconds to do a res change once a week in these containers. Now it takes me five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, to in between mixing this and changing all four of these buckets out and emptying the water. It's a done deal in, in about 10, 15 minutes. I, you know, I won't have to come back in here and do anything nutrients for the next fucking five to seven days. So um, that's how that's done. I'm, that didn't sound very complicated, did it? Now, when you're growing a container, you gotta have a really good eye on what the fuck is going on with the leaves, um, and signs of toxicities or you know deficiencies and things like that. So, this is an e easy system to approach, but at the same time, one little fucking dumb mistake, like forgetting to top off the water when it needs to be, can devastate your entire grow. It could kill everything. So it's all about um, making a plan and setting this up appropriately to your lifestyle. Like if you're never home, well, you know, twice a week, you know, you're going to want to go with a large reservoir, possibly an automated system that tops off uh, these buckets. So that's when it starts to get more complex. Um, I'm not going to show you guys any of that because I don't do it. Um, I don't, it's not necessary. I'll just go with a bigger fucking container. And uh, that will set me straight for a week or so until I can come in here again and um, give these babies some uh, more nutrients and a uh, nutrient swap out. Once these plants go under the s in flower, um, in the in the scrog net, I use five foot scrog nets, five feet by five feet. I don't, I don't ever take the top off the base. The reason why I put this here is because I can easily toggle this down and drain the water into another bucket uh, because this bucket is elevated on top of another bucket. Easily drain the water and fill the new bucket back up uh, or the old back bucket back up through the top with the, you know more water and uh, be set for another week. Um, because once these plants are under a scrog net, you cannot remove the plant from its lower container. But I can tell you this, if you do, if you're flowering big plants like this and you are not using a scrog net, you're going to have tons of problems with trying to keep these massive buds that just weigh ounces uh, standing upright. This fucking plant will be haggled to the ground and it will just kind of be, you know, you'll be fighting the flowering phase of this growth the entire way. You could stick bamboo sticks, I don't care how many bamboo sticks you stick in there, you're still gonna be having problems. That's how fast DWC pushes um, yields and the growth, it's just, it's just unbelievable. So, um, yeah, I, I highly suggest if you're approaching DWC is use a trellis, you know, horizontal scrog net and uh, like that and that's that's how you do that and so once these buds become like a foot tall or whatever and they start to need support they'll just use the canopy for support and uh, you won't have to worry about tying anything up 
because if you're going to otherwise if you're going to use several of these buckets without a trellis net you're going to be having to get tons of yo-yos and stringing yo-yos up to the top of your lamps and your hoods and all over the fucking place and just creating a big mess so that's dwc um how to get started um i went over the how i approach it with clones how I transplant them into this. It's relatively straightforward. You make a hole and you cover it up with rocks, and that's it. Um, pretty self explanatory. Keep your nutrient concentrations low when your plants are this size. I would say for a week, just use cow mag, and this fucking plant will shoot out roots through the bottom, seeking other nutrients. And then at that point, you'll start giving it nutrients um, as it needs it, you know, about 400 ppms. You know, right now it sits at about 500 ppm, and this bitch is pretty big. So, um, I hope that I hope that's enough for now. I really do, because I, you know, I really want to get through with this uh, reservoir change. I think I've been talking for about 40 fucking minutes now, and uh, my th fucking mouth is starting to hurt. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. They don't necessarily give speeches and fucking tutorials that are that long. Um, so that's it. That sums up pretty much the entire vegetative um, DWC, how to approach, how to get started, what you're going to need. You know, if you want to change anything, it, that's on you. Change it. You know, it's like I said, it's all about you and your lifestyle and your setup and your needs. It's not about what you see in front of you here in this video. There's no one right way. Just do it the way that suits you best. Um, I'm going to leave the, the DWC part of this video uh, open for comments, uh, which means you guys will be able to post your questions freely um, without me having to approve anything. Um, so we'll see how long that lasts before some asshole comes along. But, um, yeah and because leave all the DWC comments and questions for this video um, don't send me personal messages for DWC just post them on this video that way other viewers that are having the same questions can look at the question and get the answer without having to you know ask the same question twice so yeah just leave all the you know questions for this video I'll answer all your guys' questions as fast as I can get to them um, let me know what where we need to go from here but to be honest that really sums everything up for for veg and how to get started how to get at least a month into this entire operation right here um flowering is is half as complicated as veg it's very very easy uh, once it's in flower dude it's 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 fucking you're you're on a sled dude on down heading downhill from there just waiting for the fucking eight week mark nine week mark to come along so um that that concludes everything in veg um i know you guys are going to have more specific you know questions uh on related issues or whatever you have going on but just leave those questions on the channel uh, on for this video hydro hybrid uh, i told you guys i was going to do this so uh, DWC how to hope that helps get you guys started and um, we'll take off here in about another week or two with a series two uh, for flowering when these bitches are about to go in the flower room and I give you guys some more information how to approach flowering with DWC peace hybrid